Hello everyone, and thanks for joining this um, great webcast that we have planned for you today here at the Conference Board. We're thrilled to partner uh, with the colleagues at IBM and to really discuss something that's top of mind for all of us these days, and that is how to think about um, safeguarding your employees uh, as they begin to return to the workplace, if indeed you're in that uh, camp. I know full well that many uh, companies never stopped and have all been uh, full, uh, full speed ahead. Uh, but many of us are struggling with just how to do this safely, where we can safeguard our employees, and that's going to be the uh, topic for today. So um, I'm Rebecca Ray. I have the uh, pleasure of being here at the conference board, and I serve in the capacity of overseeing the Human Capital Center. Uh, we're going to talk about a lot of things today. We're going to talk about the, the impetus to do this the right way, to emerge even stronger after this uh, pandemic, um, to take uh, good care of our employees to make sure that the workplace can be as productive as possible. Um, we're going to have some solutions that uh, uh, of the team at IBM will be sharing, and uh, and then hear a little bit about your thoughts if we we have some time at the end. So uh, just uh, as all of our webcasts operate much the same way, if you're interested in continuing education credits, you can see how uh, to obtain them uh, as you look at either HRCI, SHRM, or CPE. Uh, if you are looking for CPE credits, um, you will need to be sure that you click the, the button at several points during the webcast. So it's with great pleasure uh, that I, I share with you uh, the three uh, experts from IBM who are going to talk about um, this um, very powerful solution from IBM, but also the underlying concerns and issues around this. So I want to welcome Barb and Dana and Kendra. Thank you for, for being here this afternoon. And I know that we're all going to benefit from the wisdom that you're going to be sharing. So thank you for joining us. So let me just mention uh, how important I know this is. I speak with human capital leaders um, virtually all day long as we serve our member companies. And we've done a lot of work in this area from a, a, a rapid response to uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. We put together some initial thoughts. and. Certainly, the panic, uh, the uh, pandemic has impacted folks at different uh, rates, in different um, arcs, at different times, and with different impacts. And the end, there's no end to the number of topics that we want to make sure people are prepared to help think through. So, in addition to some rapid response reports, we also have a planner to help think through how to return to work safely, and then also some of the uh, now that you're back into the workplace or close to being there. What are some of the ways in which you're going to think about performance management and safety and compensation? You can see all the lists of the reports there. They're all hyperlinked. I hope you'll take advantage of it. It's open uh, for all uh, folks to take advantage of. So I know this is important because so many people struggle with, well, how do I get myself organized? How do I think about the many aspects of this very complicated situation? And that's why today's webcast is so important because Here's a tremendous opportunity for you to think through uh, the solution from, uh, from the uh, IBM team. So let me uh, pass, the, uh, uh, pass the baton um, and, uh, and allow folks to, to really take us through this process. Bob, I think you may be muted. Sorry about that. Not sure how that happened. Thank you, Barb. Uh, thank you for that question. As we think about the journey to reopen the workplace and optimize in response to changing conditions, the ultimate goal is a resilient, adaptable enterprise that does three things. First, provides employees accurate and reliable answers in times of crisis while reducing questions to managers and call center staff. 
monitors the daily health dynamics of your population and assesses worksite and community risk data in near real time, and optimizes a workforce model that can swiftly react and adapt to the future unexpected. Each of you as employers are in different places in your journey. Many of our clients are currently in the operational stage and are just beginning to think about their long-term success and ability to respond to changing conditions quickly and effectively now and in the future. As an organization, IBM has spent numerous hours considering the topic of workplace reentry and resiliency, both for ourselves as a large employer and for our clients. We've talked to safety officers, HR leaders, CMOs, and employees themselves. And what we heard is that it is imperative to put people first. Employees want to know that you're bringing them back as safely as possible so they can leave work each day as healthy as they arrive. It's very important to think about the skills needed in this new environment and how you organize. In addition to the roles themselves, Employers need to think differently about how the work is done and how to define the workspace differently. Communication is critical. You can see that in the statistics on the right here. People want to understand the company protocols and what they need to do to comply, and they are much more receptive to policies when they know it's about their safety and health. And finally, this cannot be a one-and-done initiative. You have to be able to monitor a variety of factors and pivot very quickly on an ongoing basis. With those objectives in mind, IBM approached this problem both as a large employer and as a technology provider. We strongly believe that accurate, timely information is key to managing the societal and workplace implications of this crisis, but also for ongoing business continuity. Every aspect of your operations needs to be known, understood, and optimized through the seamless, rapid orchestration of information. Our solution leverages the very best in data insights, expertise, and computing to manage risks and perform critical functions that will keep your workplace and people safe, confident, and secure. This starts with careful considerations about reentry into the workplace. The key is understanding the health of the population in a specific location in order to make decisions that are in the best interest of employees. From there, we want to consider safe practices within your facilities and the implications of people coming back together in person. If cases emerge, you'll want to have a command center to track and trace and direct individuals to the care they need. And all of these are underpinned with artificial intelligence to support transparent communications at scale, as well as ongoing assessment and planning. Everything we do undergoes security, privacy, and ethics review to ensure we are compliant with HIPAA, GDPR, and other regulations. Our solutions sit in a HIPAA-compliant cloud and are built with integration and flexibility in mind. We are leveraging these solutions ourselves as IBM, and can support clients as well with an end-to-end -end solution or with APIs to integrate into your existing systems where you have gaps. Before we discuss the solution and overall considerations in more detail, I would like to share a few success stories with clients that have used components of the Watson Work Suite. Our first client example focuses on workplace reentry. One large employer was looking for a more efficient way for their essential employees to safely return to work instead of using their current manual questionnaire plus temperature check at the front door process. Initially, a pilot group of 25 employees was using the tool. Today, over 1,000 employees are using it. This client recently expanded this process to include employees that traveled to other work sites. If employees proactively let clients know they have a green pass, proving they're clear to go to work. Feedback from the users has been positive, and the new process provides peace of mind for the employer, their clients, and the employees. The next example discusses facilities management and workplace safe safety, showing how IBM uses the tool called Tririga to enforce stricter cleaning protocols, track how employees are following work-from-home guidelines across thousands of locations around the globe, and quickly provide data on the status of their leases and real estate portfolio. This tool will be used as employees return to newly opened offices 
helping IBM monitor occupancy, create new space plans to align with social distancing measures, and ensure facilities are equipped with clean supplies and stations. IBM was able to reduce the time and effort required for data collection, analysis, and insight generation by 95%. And the last example I want to share is around case management. IBM, IBM in Sonoma County, California, partnered to create a three-pronged approach to help the most vulnerable citizens in the county by creating a system that could identify vulnerable citizens, match them with needed resources, coordinate housing needs, and create a master data index about these citizens. When disaster struck and local fires began, the Sonoma team was able to aggregate and provide near real-time information to caseworkers and providers working with clients that were impacted by the fires. This program coordinated housing needs for more than 4,000 fire victims. After two weeks, the number of individuals who did not have resources to leave the shelter for secure housing was about 300. Of these, 77 were clients with multiple complex needs. And after 10 months, 34 cases were stable and intimately monitored, and 43 cases being actively managed. Very powerful. I will now hand it over to my colleague, Kendra, to discuss uh, overall considerations that employers should be thinking about when it comes to workforce health and workplace management and safety. Thank you, Barb. Appreciate it. Uh, before I get started, I think uh, I'd like for Rebecca to pull the audience with a question. Rebecca, if you don't mind. Oh, you're on mute, Rebecca. So now we're even, Barb. Okay. So <laughs> uh, my apologies. All right, so I'm going to ask uh, uh, folks to put up uh, uh, their votes here. Uh, we're looking at this question. As your organization begins to think about returning to the workplace, what's your major concern? You have three choices or an all of the above. So it's either determining when employees can return, managing the facility and ensuring workforce, workforce, excuse me, workplace safety, tracing potential exposures, or you're concerned about all of them. So. I see a, a winner emerging here, I think. Let's take one more moment to put your, your vote together. All right. Let us uh, take 30 seconds and then close the poll. Great. So clearly, uh, Kendra, um, people are concerned on a variety of issues and concerns as they, as they think about reentering the workplace. Does this align with a lot of the work that you're doing with clients or, or other groups with whom you speak? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that uh, I, I'm not surprised by the all of the above, you know, answer being the majority of, of the responses there, uh, because there are so many different factors that people are taking into account when doing it. And it's really a matter of prioritization, looking at where you are, where your company is in the journey, and figuring out where that entry point is, you know, for you to jump off from. So. With that, why don't I just get into a little bit more detail about um, you know, our offerings and some of the capabilities that we have. So um, this slide, the next slide actually, <laughs> gets into kind of where we started, right? We, we know that there's not a role in your company that is not impacted in some way as we all kind of strategize about returning to work. And because of that, we have put the employee's needs at the center of our solution. We have to pick the entry point, and we know that you agree with us that that's the most important place to start. Um, they need to be informed every step of the way, really, to have the trust and the confidence that they need in order to return back to the workplace or campus or public facility. You know, they're going to have questions that you, we need to provide answers for, that you need to provide answers for. Um, you know, what are my company's new policies? Right? What does my office even look like now? Is it even open? Right? Is my workspace clean? And am I the only one that can be in my workspace? All these questions, if, if we can provide them with quick answers, it's going to really help them know that you're on top of it and that confidence starts to be built. So all of these questions and more can be answered with one application that's in the palm of the employee's hand. 
they'll easily be able to answer you know, their health questionnaire every day. They'll get a red or a green pass to come into the office to be able to quickly reserve their spaces you know, for that day. And they'll be able to find answers to all the most important questions that are on their mind. If we go to the next slide, on the other side of the coin, obviously, is the employer. And in order for them, and, and us, even at IBM, frankly, to make the decisions we need to make, we need data. The more, the better. That data helps us answer all the questions like, which locations are even ready to, be, to open from a public and population health perspective? How can we flex our spaces to ensure that our new guidelines around occupancy are being met? Are employees following the new guidelines that we're putting in place? I mean, it's, that's an important question. So with our analytics-based command center, right, employers can have the data at their fingertips to help them identify company locations where conditions have been met to safely open based on a variety of factors, things like national, state, and local COVID-19 infection rates and trends that are aggregated by our weather company, right? Claims data on employee risk and vulnerability to assess health promotion opportunities. Uh, normative data from IBM Market Scan. This provides a population health snapshot at the local level. And then employee self-reported symptoms and lab-based test results. We then surface these emerging trends as patterns and employees, and those patterns are things like, are the employees adhering to social distancing? Um, how am I, how's the crowd density on a given floor or location and building, right? How am I, am I able to honor, monitor my occupancy and, you know, PPE detection, things like that. So as we surface those trends, we monitor all of these data points to ensure the adherence to the new policies and procedures, and then we can direct employees to appropriate testing and medical care resources if necessary. Next, this is really a quick view of a little bit of what I just covered, the employee app and the command center that I was just talking about. So that employee app is that central place for your employees to get access to all those policies and resources and answers to COVID-19 questions, right? Provoid, provide that self-reported symptom check every day. So before they can return into the office, they take a health uh, questionnaire in this employee app. They get a red, a red pass or a green pass to return to the office. And every day, it routinely assesses that individual's health status. And they can gain access to the workplace via that daily health path. On the command center side of things, that's that single view like we talked about for employers like site safety or operations managers to see their locations, which ones have met those reentry conditions via those trends and patterns that we touched on, right? Monitor the symptoms, triage employees to the appropriate testing resources that they need, and even analyze you know, health dynamics to identify on-site specific health promotion opportunities. On the next slide, we talk a little bit about now that you've planned for re-entry and you have your single view of what's happening into your locations, you have to ensure that those, those locations are ready for the employees to come back to. So Barb talked about it a little bit. Our Tririga facilities management capabilities integrated with Watson Works can do that, right? We can create safer spaces with dynamic space planning that allows employers to quickly sort of design new space plans that adhere to social distancing guidelines. And they can quickly change those as guidelines evolve because that's going to happen. These guidelines are not put in place one and done. You know, you're going to have to dynamically be able to reconfigure spaces as these guidelines change. It also allows for reservations of those spaces easily by employees that have gotten their green pass to come to work. So they can employ, they can reserve that desk that meeting room that they know is safe. It gives the employees to ask for other services like cleaning when they need them, helps employers control costs, right, through a centralized management of facility and capital projects and asset tracking. So let me give you an example. Installation of highly efficient air filters, hand sanitizing stations, new signage, no touch trash cans, right, barriers between the workstations in larger projects to reconfigure spaces to ensure, you know, that, that they're set up correctly for the new guidelines, right? These are things that you need to be able to do, but you also want to be able to manage them in a repeatable way. So we offer project templates as well as the management of these projects 
so that you can execute these things efficiently across all of your locations. And you can track your critical supplies to be sure that those supplies are there where you need them when you're open. Um, we also help you adhere to new protocols like new maintenance, cleaning, disinfecting protocols. They can also be automatically set up after space has been used. For example, you know, a meeting room, a meeting ends at a certain time, an automatic request is sent out for that space to be cleaned before the next meeting starts. So all this is consolidated in a data set that can be modular or integrated with a command center. So information like which employees were seated next to each other in the event of infection can be leveraged by your CMOs. The capacity of your building being over that of a safe level can be known by your site safety officer, your operations manager. And the history of which spaces were cleaned and when it could be made available not only to your operations manager, but to employees if desired, you know, to further build that trust and confidence. It's essential information that you need to make faster, smarter decisions now and, and in the future. So, next slide. Can I, Kendra, if I could, I just think that's such an important point because it's one thing to have a very safe workplace. It's another to be able to communicate that effectively to employees so that they have a level of confidence. And so many times you, you hear people are talking about what should be done, but there's not often that loop back to continual communication with employees so that they do feel comfortable. I think that's yeah, so critical. Yeah, I agree. Important. And a lot of our clients are saying the same thing, too. I mean, it's that you know, people are, are nervous, and we, we need to help them not be nervous. Um, this slide talks about the, one of the uh, other capabilities that we have. So, you know, I talked a whole lot about planning and all this and putting those guidelines in place and planning for the new, you know, capacity limitations and space layout. It's, it's only good if people are following the guidelines. And you only know if they're following the guidelines if you're monitoring. So we deliver a fast and scalable site occupancy monitoring with a number of different IOC sensors or even your existing wireless hardware to our partnership with Cisco. So our solution uses wireless or you know, and or IoT sensor data and pre-built analytics to do all of the things on these slides, right? Monitoring the distance between individuals to provide that social distance scoring. Um, we can allow an admin to designate certain areas as no-go zones and alert supervisors when individuals are detected. We can determine if occupancy levels have exceeded a client-defined threshold in a certain space or a specific zone. Um, monitoring the density and average proximity of people in a specific space based on people counting in a camera's field of view. Um, we can identify even elevated body temperature with wearables to indicate you know, potential unsuitability for work. Um, we can even determine whether or not an individual is wearing a face mask based on a video feed and do event-based tracing, you know, within an enterprise design location. So when any of these monitors detect a concern based on the thresholds and the rules that the client sets up, the alerts are triggered so they can be addressed. Now last slide, um, you know, I really just want to, to kind of make it clear that putting capabilities that I've just talked about in place absolutely helps our clients with the current emergency. But it also sets you up for the next one. Because whether it's a natural disaster or a pandemic or a power outage, this solution gives our clients the data that they need to ensure that their staff is working safely. It identifies impacted facilities. It helps you plan for contingencies and locate and manage key assets. Um, it, it, it helps them be sure that they're going to be able to keep their businesses running with the key resources and alternative work plans in place for the next emergency. In fact, the United States Air Force knows firsthand about using our solution for ongoing planning through all kinds of crises. They were able to assess and report uh, impact to their over 650 million square feet of facilities and 110,000 assets to the U.S. government in a matter of a couple of weeks, which sounds long, but we're talking federal government timeline here, so that was really fast. Um, you know, it took nine months before our solution was in place. But they did that through a flood, a hurricane, and an earthquake. So I think that's really impactful. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Dana to show you a little bit about what I've talked about and how it works. Thanks, Kendra. 
So I'm going to walk through how this works. Uh, we did have to record this as a video to uh, get through the uh, process. So if we can cue that video, I will stay on track. I've seen some questions come through. And I know that there's some universities on the phone. So we're showing the return to work uh, version of this. But it's important to note there's a return to campus application and where the differences are as we go through this. I, I will highlight that for you. So you're looking at the employee application of the solution. I'm assuming this is moving. Uh, yes, and down at the bottom, I like to call this the bulletin board. This is where we can hide, house some of that communication information that uh, we've been speaking about here. So the first thing here, COVID-19 in your area. IBM owns the weather company, the weather channel. This is where we're getting a lot of our a community data. It scrubs 33,000 counties in America uh, every hour on the hour. So you can go here to figure out what's going on in your community. Uh, we have clients who are looking to this as we are for return to travel. You know, how might we leverage that? There is a digital assistant over here, the Watson Q&A, based on CDC guidelines. Uh, so if someone just wanted to go out here to get some basic information, It'd be pretty easy to do. Lost our video. OK. Now, so we'll go back to that. Company policies and news. This is where you're going to want to post everything from safety, your social distancing requirements, uh, how a benefit might get paid, uh, where you go for family medical leave. So think of sort of any kind of policies and news. We have some clients who are posting disease management opportunities out here. Uh, we are seeing an uptick in people trying to manage that, that health care. So any kind of policy and news that you want. There's also another digital assistant out here. It's available 24-7. Uh, you can go and either point and click and get some basic information on how do I get a test, for example. Um, what we've done here is link to every uh, public health department in the country. So it's really easy for people to go out and get up-to-date information in their location. We opted to do this this way because they are changing so rapidly. And this way, employees can go, I live in Connecticut. I can go out and find a testing center. What's going on with my school, my public transportation, my shopping, whatever the case may be. So this is where they'll go for that kind of current information to help them understand what's going on in their area. And I'll show you some examples of how we can build out the bulletin board in just a second. I can also ask Watson a question. Where do I need to wear a mask? Where do I buy one? What does that mean? And again, tailored both to the organization or the location that a person lives in. So all kinds of things can be housed in the bulletin board. Um, when you get started, there is a term of use that everyone has to fill out so they understand how you're using the tool on their behalf. There is also an opt-in health assessment. So we're asking if anyone in the household is over 60, uh, pregnant, has cancer, autoimmune, diabetes, COPD, any kind of illness that might implicate or uh, you know, create a more intense case. Uh, so again, we can help them either manage that illness or design some health promotion opportunities uh, as we go along. The main feature of this is the check-in feature. A lot of work passes out there, a lot of symptom checkers out there. Um, this is ours. Uh, it is configurable to a client. We start by asking questions about, are you living with someone with COVID, or have you potentially been exposed? And then the symptoms are based on the CDC guidelines. Again, you can configure the symptoms as you need them. If you are symptom-free, you will submit your changes and get a work pass. It'll tell you that the location is open. Depending on what your policies are, so if you're doing a temperature screening when employees come into work, this will get them into the building. And then they'll go through the secondary screening. People doing the secondary screening can authorize entry into the building, attach it to a badge, whatever the case may be. If you were, in fact, uh, exposed, uh, we asked you the date of that. We just had the 4th of July weekend. So it happened on the 4th of July, and now I'm starting to see symptoms like difficulty breathing, fever, um, 
and any other kind of symptom related to COVID, I put that date in there as well. Uh, and I'm going to get a red pass. This serves two functions. Um, so first of all, it starts the contact trace because we know the gap in which someone might have been exposed. And it, it also gives them what we call the assistant pathway. Um, do you call telemedicine? Do you go to corporate health? If you're a student, you will probably advise to go to the student health center. Faculty may be advised to go to the occupational health center. This is configured by what you want them to do, and it automatically hyperlinks them to the triage pathway that you want them to take. If someone has been exposed or diagnosed, the path will automatically turn off for 14 days, which is the quarantine period, but you as an entity have the option of overriding that if or they got a test and it was negative. So that's the employee application from the pure health perspective. We're switching now to what we call our command center. The command center, we load all of your locations around the country, and the map shows you where those locations are. If you're a university, you will see a university map with your buildings, your lecture halls, your dormitories, uh, so on and so forth. So we build out community readiness. That's the starting point here. This is a health issue. We are looking at the population and public health in a given location to assess the readiness as to whether or not that location should open. Now, we're not telling you to open. We're not providing medical advice. We're creating a status. And the way that we do that is looking at three different uh, algorithms behind the scenes. The first is community risk. It's based on a scale of one to six. And then the second is workforce availability. So how many people had symptoms? How many people have comorbid conditions? That's a factor of 100. You as an organization tell us how you want that configured. And then we run the data every day and say, based on your criteria, that location met the criteria, so they're green, or they didn't, and they're red. On the bottom, you can see the least favorable and the most favorable locations to open. Um, all of the bubbles are point and click, so you can open and drill from any area on the uh, dashboard that you need to to look at a specific location as you um, start to evaluate what's going on. We will provide overnight the top five locations for the university buildings or dormitories. Uh, that changed from red to green, meaning something happened, and we need to understand what. Uh, we're also showing you yesterday, today, and a week ago, so you can start to look at patterns. You can drill down into a specific location simply by clicking on that location. You can look at essential versus non-essential workers, faculty versus students, um, and it'll give you that information. And we're looking at increases in cases, increases in tests, hospitalizations, and deaths as the primary indicators for um, community risk. One of the things this tool has that uh, we think is game-changing uh, is the ability to predict two weeks out what's going to happen. Uh, so you'll be able to plan ahead and stay ahead of the curve. We're also providing who was red, who was green, and who was gray, meaning they didn't fill it out. If you get a lot of those, there's an educational opportunity, and you might want to send a note back to the inbox in the employee app. We're also looking at who's been symptomatic, who tested positive, um, so you can use that for um, designing a testing strategy, potentially. Now you've decided to open, you need to plan the space. So here we're using our Building Insights tool. We load the configuration of every floor for whom you have people. You can set up pods. You can set up neighborhoods. You can figure out how you want to socially distance your building and then report it to employees. Now you'll notice I mentioned the ability to change the bulletin board. If you are loading any kind of building tools, you will now have this schedule me option. So as Kendra pointed out before, you can reserve your space. Uh, someone asked a question earlier about um, how do I plan cafeterias? So you can plan cafeterias. IBM's using it for elevators. Uh, you can request services. Because we have this, we know where people are in the building at all times which I will show you how that implicates on um, 
um, scheduling time. Universities, think of this to use it for libraries or lecture halls or whatever the case may be. So now we've opened, now we have to monitor that building. These are those tools where we're using Bluetooth and beacons and IoT devices to say what's the compliance ratio in a given building. This is updated in absolute real time. So we're looking at things like capacity planning, face mask detection, social distancing, um, managing the occupancy of the elevators. You'll see, again, and I should have mentioned it before, this is a global application so we can see what's going on in any given location. You simply pick the location you want the information on and you'll get a dashboard. This is the social distance monitoring um, key indicator uh, when we need to social distance for contact tracing purposes. There's a graph that shows you what's happening. There's a heat monitor. Again, great way to start communicating to people. If it gets too crowded, you might need this information to go back and redesign your space or re-communicate your space. Again, looking at it workplace by workplace. What happened? What's changing? Did they meet the targets you set? Uh, where are your biggest opportunities for noncompliance? And again, you want to communicate. You want to go back, and that goes back into the employee app. Maybe you're changing your policy as a result of it. So very holistically, look at the organization. Which locations did a better job with compliance over time? Um, where do you have to complete that contact tracing? Now, all of these are Watson works, and if you can go back and turn off the video and go back to the uh, deck, all of these tools allow us to identify people in an organization as we, you know, so, and all of them have an element of being able to identify people for contact tracing. Uh, so we have employers who have their own contact tracing uh, team. Uh, universities absolutely doing their uh, contact tracing through either their student medical centers or their on-site uh, university medical centers. So we are providing software for those teams. And again, either through an API or through a direct list from any one of the solutions in Watson Work, we will actually populate a very comprehensive case management tool to help you or to facilitate, I should say, the contact tracing of individuals who have been exposed and or diagnosed. So we will preload uh, all of the assessments. The questions are already configured based on CDC guidelines. So you can start to capture the information you need about an employee. Um, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> this will do all the contact tracing, so recent locations. And because we're using those tools internally, like Kendra spoke about before, we know who sat in a pod with you, who was in a conference room with you, who might have been in an elevator with you or in the same spot. So it allows us to not only trace the person who was exposed, but potentially the um, exposure of other people as well so we can start that workflow process for contact tracing. Um, I'm looking at some of these questions uh, as we go through because I want to make sure there really is no minimum in terms of employees and students who might want to buy this solution. I mean, we talk about employers returning to work. Um, universities have a different challenge because they have this uh, group of um, they have this group of stakeholders called parents uh, who really uh, have a huge factor in some of these decisions. So it really is not uh, a question of your size. But anyway, here's another example now where we have linked to Google Maps so we can very directly not only triage the employee, the student, or the faculty, but also find them social services such as child care, travel, food services, medication delivery. So it really is giving them an end-to-end -end solution for the um, management of uh, the infected person. Okay. Uh, so that's sort of a very uh, quick overview of the tool and how it works. Um, there is a question here about feedback, about pushback due to Big Brother. Um, this is really, uh, it's a great question, by the way. 
One of the things, as Barb mentioned early on, uh, we did a lot of surveying and we surveyed employees. Uh, if you make this about their safety, we are really seeing uh, an increase in engagement like we've uh, never seen before. So at our core, you know, we build a lot of uh, large integrated scale databases. We're starting to see an increase in people calling their disease management companies, calling their EAPs. So if you communicate this, being about the safety of them and their families, the response rate is um, incredibly different than if you're making it about, um, you know, corporate profit, as an example. So I'm um, happy to address some of those uh, questions with you directly. Uh, just a quick wrap-up. Uh, I hope you found this uh, comprehensive. We're certainly, uh, I will tell you, when we launched this in May, uh, it, it feels like it changes every single day. Uh, no two clients have the same needs. Uh, but we hope that you saw that the infrastructure is there. Uh, you know, the analysts are looking at tools around the country very, very carefully. This was just issued by the IDC. Uh, we're very proud of this because they distinguished IBM uh, as sort of a leader in this space because of our ability to integrate HR, communications, safety, um, workforce management, et cetera. And, you know, that comes from uh, a long history of using um, software, hardware, and expertise to, to bring timely things to the market. You know, our former CEO, uh, you know, when we put the man on the moon, uh, we said healthcare is our moonshot. We are in a uh, pandemic uh, like no one ever expected. So we're leveraging our employer experience. We work with some of the largest organizations in America, helping them understand their health care costs. I'm sure some of you may be on the phone today. Uh, so it's that health care and medical expertise. Uh, at the end of the day, this is a, a medical issue um, that allows us to really bring um, that industry expertise to the fore. We have a HOPE team that's with uh, a group of physicians and epidemiologists, uh, many who are involved in public health who are bringing their expertise to the COVID-19 crisis and beyond to help us. Um, privacy is a tremendous concern for us. As Barb mentioned earlier, nothing goes to the market without security, privacy, and ethics review. So we take that very, very seriously and protect that data uh, very, very seriously. Uh, I mentioned we launched this in May. Um, some of this was based on old technology, sort of reinvented to solve a pandemic and others others with new innovation. So I think our ability to scale, um, bring that technology to the forefront, uh, understand data, uh, and really leverage that data to your benefit, uh, we're, we're really excited about um, bringing this uh, forward to you and your um, organization. Dana, uh, this is Rebecca. So may I just um, push this is an incredible tool. I love the predictive analytics aspect of this. I love the ability to position this not only as a way to address this crisis, but also to set you up for dealing with anything else that, that comes along. It's incredible. Um, there's a question here, though, that I, I would love you to maybe just uh, touch on. And the question is specifically around, is there a a way to configure this, or is there an application specifically yeah. for a hospital yeah, or other health care? Interesting question for hospitals, right? So <laughs> hospitals never close, obviously. Um, and I, we, do, we do have several hospitals. There's some really interesting models for hospitals, but one of the biggest challenges when we talk to our hospital clients now is um, there's a public fear factor to go into a hospital. So in many respects, we're looking at this to how do we um, test patients as they're coming into the building and use screenings for that. Uh, there were also non-essential workers that have to come back. Uh, so there is definitely a model for the um, hospitals. We have a lot of um, clients, universities, and you know private clients who need a want a community testing alternative, or they want. So there's a very interesting model I think for hospitals, not only as employers, but as um, caregivers, local caregivers in a community. So um, be more than happy to talk to them independently on what 
clients are doing. But we have a couple of uh, work teams that we're talking to that are using their uh, their local hospital for testing that they can play sports in the fall, as an example. So really interesting model coming out of the hospital. Without question, and we've all seen the impact uh, that it's had on the healthcare industry in particular. Um, not only as they try to keep their own employees safe, but also the communities they serve, and, and certainly those who are in dire need with COVID. So, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dana, for for taking that, uh, taking us through this. I'm, I'm just uh, checking to see if there are other questions that could be addressed now. Yeah, well, uh, there seems to be a lot of Certainly questions around pricing, and I'm sure that's pricing. an individual conversation. The, but. the general model, depending on the solution that you pick. So, you know, again, remember it's modularity in mind. If you're using the return to work advisor, if there is currently not a set of costs, at can confirm if that will go to the end of the year or not. It is based on a put from month three, four uh, universities um, per, per student, number of students, number of faculty. Um, if you're using Tririga, you're using that building piece, that safety piece, and those monitors. Um, costs are going to be variable based on I kept a beacon and, and what kind of solution you want to put in. And but I don't want to. I would be remiss, and it would be irresponsible of me to sort of quote prices for that because of the variety of tools. Have you got anything to add on that? I mean, I was answering that question in the chat for folks as well. I mean, Dana's right. We're 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 working on, or we have a per employee per pricing uh, month per month model, and as she said, it's modular. So you know, we can go anywhere from a couple dollars up to you know the mid twenties. It just depends on the capabilities that you guys that our clients need and what we need to implement. So. Could ask a lead time question, Rebecca. Do you want me to grab that one too? So again, and, and depending on where you are in the solution, it can be a week, it can be two weeks, it can be three weeks, and we build them out. You know, we can put in a care management solution in about a week. Uh, we are loading the command center with all of that publicly available information and the employee data uh, in about two weeks from the time it takes us to get the data. Um, and there's a path, right? I will tell you, we are offering a three-hour um, workshop with our uh, consulting team to help you develop and design a, a rollout strategy and sort of figure out what you're already doing and how we fill in the gap that is a free service for three hours, uh, which is certainly something we can talk to people about too. Figure out how to get started, what do you need, how do we help you, uh, if you're already using something or you need to enhance what you already have. Well, thank you. Thank you for that, Dana. And um, I think it's safe to assume that if there are individual questions, like pricing or anything else, that they'd like to have a conversation, if they can um, just type their um, names in, we'll, we'll make sure that uh, we have a chance to have you folks follow up and answer those more specific questions. Just looking to see if there's anything else that uh, is of a general nature that we might want to to to, um, to bring in. You know, one of the things I was pleased to hear you say is that uh, certainly there's a, a great deal of concern about privacy issues, but that people, when they see this through the lens of their personal safety, seem to be very open to providing more detailed information. And that's always the concern, I think, is that what's the trade-off and how will people uh, rationalize the value um, of the product or service, yeah. and then how will they feel about Just uh, one quick note on that. Uh, uh, data. So the employee application, again, there is a term of use. Uh, the employee only opts in to do the health questionnaire. Uh, the employer in the command center only sees things in the aggregate. They never see anything at the individual level. Uh, the only people seeing things at the individual level would be those case managers uh, who have authority, and we can also um, secure the command center so the safety people may only look at the workforce planning and the uh, employer may look at something else. So privacy is um, obviously very important, and we do, uh, I think we do the best job in the industry protecting uh, PHI. So that's an underlying pillar. 
And um, there's a question, that, uh, Kendra, thanks for answering that one around the global nature of this. Because I think that speaks sometimes to privacy issues. So many uh, companies yeah. have a global footprint, and we have to make sure we're, that we are we're still on you know, the global well again, um, going through that security same security privacy, privacy ethics. Uh, you know, we have GDPR in the EU. Uh, we're not touching China for obvious reasons. Um, and the other thing is, it's not so much the privacy laws as it is the labor laws that you have to pay very close attention to uh, internationally. Um, we do have uh, three clients who are, we're already developing their international roadmap, um, and everyone has different priorities, but we do have a rollout list uh, to go internationally with the employee app and are launching that, you know, very, very shortly. Well, in these closing moments, let me just ask if Barb or Kendra have any additional thoughts or final uh, thoughts you'd like to share. Um, I didn't have anything else I'd like to share. I think that we have a lot of energy and excitement around this, um, a lot of great interest out there in the marketplace. I, I recognize the need for large corporations and small entities, um, and we've been really uh, pivoting uh, to meet the needs of universities and systems. So um, if you, you know, have a unique uh, business, uh, we'd love to talk to you. No, I thank you guys so much for your time. I appreciate you allowing us to you share you know, what we have with you. And you know, we'd very much like to help you get started in, in any, any aspect of this journey. So just let us know. Right. Well, someone, my thanks to the three of you for taking us through. I think this is an incredible tool, and I hope people will um, really think about how this might be leveraged for uh, the, the needs of the employees as well as business continuity. And I love the, I love the interface with you know weather data, and so many disasters arise from, uh, you know, from weather-related events. So what a, what a great thing! So thank you for sharing that. And, I've got a, just a couple of slides before uh, we all uh, say goodbye. So uh, with that, I'll move on. Thank you. This was really terrific. A couple of uh, slides here for um, for your viewing. I'll encourage you to download the slides. Um, I do want to make you aware of related uh, webcasts that are coming up and hope you'll take advantage of them. Uh, we have one uh, this um, uh, Wednesday coming up on uh, racial inequities in the labor market. Uh, you can see that we have um, about a, a great deal around the pandemic and you know, getting ready for the new normal, so please take advantage of that. And then also, if you're interested in our podcast series, you can certainly um, sign up for all of them. And uh, we're trying to bring you all of the latest research, but some really great thinkers from some of the folks we partner with. So finally, um, if you're interested in sponsoring the podcast, we'd love to hear from you. And there's also an evaluation at the end, and I hope you'll take just a moment uh, to complete that. There's an awful lot of folks on the line today. I'm sure there'll be some interesting great feedback, but if there are things that I can be helpful with in terms of bringing uh, speakers and topics to you or improving what we do, we'd certainly love to hear from you. So with that, um, I'll, I'll let, uh, let everyone get back to their day, but I, I do want to thank Barb, Barb and Dana and Kendra for the really terrific presentation and the tremendous good that I know this will do for our profession and for workers across not only the United States,